What's up, it's Endymion, and there's some pressing information from certain places that I want to go over. From insider information claiming that Warhammer 40k's live-action show at Amazon is in turmoil as we speak. And Valorant setting a really scary precedent going forward when it comes to your autonomy as a player within video game ecosystems. Let's just get into this Warhammer story first. This news comes from another YouTuber named The Archcast who has his own sources within Games Workshop who feeds him information and according to his sources, Warhammer 40k's live-action series is currently in a lot of trouble. Back when the female custody stuff dropped, I spoke about how Amazon has a specific AI system that's designed to filter through the complaints from their various feeds, which then allows the higher-ups at Amazon to find out what the most pressing matters are according to consumer feedback. This is obviously smart of them to do, but when the female custodies thing happened, the AI was running in overtime because of the deluge of emails and comments Amazon was getting telling them to stop what they were doing. Well now that same AI allegedly, according to Archcast source, is being swarmed with people telling Amazon to let Henry Cavill personally run the Warhammer franchise for them. Pretty much, customers have so little faith in Amazon as a company to do this right, they would rather anyone but them do it. Obviously, we know Amazon has had blunders in the past. Take Rings of Power, which bombed, and they obviously learned nothing but instead doubled down with Season 2. Did you know that Rings of Power has 22 producers attached to the show, and that every director of Season 2's episodes will be a woman, as if that means anything? What I just said, does that instill confidence within you? No? Well, me either. But that's what they're doing. They seem to be a company that doubles down on the things they do poorly simply because they refuse to admit when they're wrong. And we need to also realize that way back when the female custodies thing was happening originally, we learned from Archcast Source within Games Workshop that it wasn't actually Games Workshop that pushed for female custodies, it was actually Amazon instead. The logic behind it was that they wanted to have female representation within the more popular factions. Which means when the show would inevitably happen, this version of Warhammer would very likely have not only female custodies, but Space Marines too. And I would guess most people in positions of power within Warhammer will be women too, which again, if you know anything about Warhammer, it's pretty much a sausage fest of a franchise, both in fandom and lore. There are women factions, yes, like the Sisters of Silence, but we already know Amazon will hate the entire idea of that faction already. Because the sisters never speak because of the whole silence in their name. And an entire faction of women who don't speak, that's like a new 9-11 crisis for woke feminist morons. So naturally, whenever those ladies join the show, they will be the sisters of shrieking, if anything. I can already see it. They make one of the main characters a butch lesbian sister of silence who refuses to stay quiet. And she advocates for women's rights to speak and voice their opinions, and then they all rise up and start talking. And then the Emperor of Mankind just drops a nuke on them, and they all get obliterated in an instant. At least that would be something the Emperor would actually do anyways. The point here is that according to Arch's sources, as he further explained, Amazon is worried as hell about everything that comes with Warhammer. They're essentially in a tough spot of their own making, where on one hand, they want to make the Warhammer show a thing, but they are wrestling with the fact that they don't want to make it male-focused. Essentially, they're trying to Disney Star Wars a franchise that is the antithesis of everything these activists stand for. So to say the show is currently in a chaotic mess of a spot would be an understatement. The obvious answer here would be to just make a show that is authentic to the franchise, but we know Amazon can't do that. Even in Fallout, they did stuff like erase Shady Sands and give a middle finger to New Vegas fans. And they made their main character a girl who is the bestest ever at everything. Even in the Halo show, they tried to push some weird, non-canon girl side main character on fans too. Honestly, this whole mess sounds like Warhammer's live action will be somewhere between Halo and Rings of Power where it doesn't invigorate the franchise in any way and kind of just uses it as a vehicle to bring political ideology and modern-day whataboutisms into the homes of people who like the franchise in its original state. But it's wild that the AI that filters Amazon's mess is struggling to even deal with the nuclear-level pushback that they've been receiving. As for the tsunami of emails flooding Amazon servers from fans saying they want Henry Cavill in charge or they walk, I really doubt Amazon will listen. Of course, yes, the fans are right. Henry should be akin to the highest level filter for something like this. 
Any decision that goes against the lore from Amazon should have to be okayed by Henry and the other executive producers if they were smart. But we know Henry Cavill is obviously busy and likely he gave them his wants and needs and then left the show in the hands of other writers and such hoping that he doesn't get a repeat of The Witcher. But I think if Henry is serious about this show, he needs to grab the reins before this horse ghost hits up. Because we know Henry is capable of giving fans what they want. Remember that in The Witcher Netflix, when Roach, Geralt's horse, dies? It was supposed to be comedic, but Henry felt it was an insult to Geralt and Roach's relationship. And he managed to change the showrunners' and writers' minds, and he instead used direct quotes from the actual books to create a very soothing and sad scene where Geralt says goodbye to his friend. And it worked, in my opinion, to this day, it's one of the best scenes in that series. So what I'm trying to say here is that when Netflix allowed Henry to have more control, The Witcher felt authentic, it felt real and respectful. That's all we want. I think I speak for everyone in that regard. We just want what we love to be respected and not twisted by weirdos. I fear the same problems that plagued Witcher will be here for Warhammer as well. And since this is Hollywood, we know that these people are full of themselves. And their egos are so big, they'd rather drive the ship into hell itself before they admit that they were ever wrong. Arch also explains that there are only two viable options forward, realistically, that could happen with this show, and neither really seems preferable. The first is Amazon rejects all the fans' ideas and pleas, and they simply take Warhammer and just turn it into Rings of Power 2.0, which honestly, I could easily see them doing this. That's what I personally think we're going to see. There is no objective way that Amazon allows this show to be its true, authentic self because that would mean they have to admit that they're wrong and the agenda pushing is a dying concept. The other scenario, which Arch believes is more likely, is that Amazon just flat out cancels the entire thing and they shelve the series for good. Why would they do that, you may be asking? Well, realistically, a Warhammer live action series would understandably be insanely expensive to do. Rings of Power was also expensive as hell, but in their benefit, that series is strictly fantasy. Rings of Power was also expensive as hell, but in their benefit, that series is strictly fantasy, so you can use real-world locations aplenty, and while there is tons of CGI in Rings still, they can still use practical stuff. In Warhammer's case, it's science fiction, which is universally considered one of the most risky and expensive genres to properly convey in live-action content. Look at the upcoming Star Wars The Acolyte. That show is 8 episodes long at 30 minutes apiece, and its budget is $180 million. Even slop like She-Hulk cost around $200 million somehow. Don't ask me how She-Hulk cost almost the same as Captain America Civil War. I don't know either. The point here is that Warhammer, if made into a show, is going to be insanely expensive if they make it right. The suits alone are going to be ridiculous, and if Amazon skimps out and makes the Space Marine armor, for example, smaller than it is in the games or books, fans will riot. Same goes for the enemies, they need to look great and not like slop. Just the scale of the 40k universe is crazy, especially considering Space Marines and such are genetically altered too, so they're huge compared to normal humans. So if Amazon wanted to convey their size appropriately, they'd have to basically do what Peter Jackson did when Aragorn speaks to Frodo and the other hobbits and make them look smaller when they're beside each other. What I'm saying is maybe Amazon is realizing now in retrospect that what they bit off here is way more than they can swallow. And they likely looked at Warhammer originally and probably went, oh, it's like a darker version of Halo or Star Wars, and they figured that they could just do that. But what they didn't realize is that 40k fans are some of the most loyal and rabid fans in the world, and for good reason. They thought they could modern audience a franchise where the fan base hates that sort of thing, and it's not working out for them. In my mind, if Warhammer were to be made, it will cost way more than Rings of Power has. Would an authentic Warhammer live-action universe be amazing? Absolutely. Do I think Amazon, or really any big company in the world, could do it right? Not at all. If Amazon's complaint database is already overfilling to the brim and they have all of this bad will due to their push for female adeptus custodians already, what chance do they realistically have to turn this around? They probably can't. The only hope really is that Henry Cavill takes the reins and makes it authentic, but I don't personally believe that he has the time or support he needs from actual people tied to this project to make it happen. At best, you get a Warhammer show that takes many liberties with the IP due to the massive scale of it all in order for it to work. 
and at worst, you're going to get Rings of Power 40k with women in leading roles all over. And you'll absolutely see things like the Sisters of Silence immediately breaking their vows because a woman's voice is powerful, or whatever these woke institutions keep saying. But that's what we know for now when it comes to Warhammer 40k's show. It will either be horrible, or Amazon will burn everything and cancel it because they know it'll be dead on arrival. And maybe that'll be enough of a mercy, because I think a decades-long live-action universe that destroys everything, that would honestly be horrible too. Great for content, mind you, but terrible for the actual fans. But let me know what you think about the story. Now, let's move on to this other pressing matter that is so egregious, it's honestly annoying me already the more I think about it. From thegamer.com, we have this article titled, Toxic Valorant Players Will Get Hardware Bans Told to Play Something Else. So this all started when Valorant's community team came together and released this video where one of their management spoke about player toxicity and keeping the community free of that kind of behavior. I'll play a little bit of it, but if you want to see the whole thing, you can go watch it yourself on their YouTube channel, but here's some of it. Hey everyone, I'm Anna and I'm the studio head for Valorant and I'm here to chat a bit about player behavior in the game. Since launching Val, especially with the addition of voice comms, we've known that fighting in-game harassment was going to be both something we needed to prioritize and also would be one of the most challenging issues that we would face. We've been working on systems and technologies and we actually have been making a lot of progress, but having large global player communities presents unique challenges evolving challenges. So we have to be ready and willing to re-examine things and hold ourselves accountable when things are not meeting our community's expectations. And that's exactly what we've been doing. I've spent the last couple of weeks reviewing player logs, looking at penalty escalation paths, discussing player behavior philosophies, seeing where they're working, and where we absolutely need to do better. It's not the first time I've had to do this. It will not be the last. It's important work but it's not always easy work. I'm a human and a parent and a caregiver and a team lead. And in almost every aspect of my life, I feel this deep responsibility to protect people. And this is no different. The responsibility of protecting our community of Valorant players is one I take very personally. And I can tell you that very often it can feel like we've, like I've failed in that responsibility. Player behavior is a complex problem space. Our systems cannot catch everything. They require constant attention and tweaking and improvement. Sometimes it has to be painfully manual or dependent on our players reporting things and on our processes staying well-tuned. And sometimes tech that has the potential to be a game changer takes longer than you wanna work. All the things we say at Riot on the topic of player behavior are true. I want to assure you that Riot has always taken this seriously. That's been true ever since we launched League of Legends. But at the end of the day, there are still some people in this world who want to take out their insecurity or their bad day or their hate or their whatever on some stranger through their computer screen. So we work harder, we take steps forward, but here's the part I can't shake. In almost all cases, someone gets hurt in the process of making these systems better. Too often it takes someone experiencing the worst behaviors, something egregious, something painful, something threatening for us to better understand where the gaps in our systems and processes are. And that's exactly what we're experiencing and addressing right now. So there's a team lead on Valorant explaining why they're so hell-bent on combating toxicity and look, I get it. Toxicity is never a good thing with any multiplayer game. I've done plenty of raids and stuff like Destiny 1 and 2 to witness a few real-life examples where a player has brought down everyone due to their moronic toxic behavior. Nine times out of ten that person gets kicked, the other one out of ten it can't happen because a toxic weirdo is the guy who's party leader, which usually just results in everyone else leaving. If you've played Destiny before and been on random teams, you know exactly what I'm talking about. This also coincides with a streamer who went viral after they posted the harassment they endured while playing Valorant on screen. Well, here's that, so let's watch it. You are literally just f***ing talk, bro. Oh, be honest with me. One down. My ult's ready. Do you know what f***ing is like? No, I don't actually. Well, do you want to know? Are you saying you're going to me? Because you're heading on the right path right now. Are you saying you're going to me? You're going on the right path right? Is that what you're saying? It's not f I like it. Is it now? Hectic goal.
And see, in this instance, I would say what the other guy said to this streamer is bound for being banned from Valorant. He obviously tried to make her really uncomfortable and threaten her with physical assault, even though yes, I know people will say, well, how can you do that when it's a video game? The point here is that this level of toxicity, for obvious reasons, shouldn't be tolerated. It would be like calling someone a racial slur in a video game. Those things should not be allowed for obvious reasons. Although the line blurs when people can get reported for simply just being angry but not actually saying anything problematic. Anyway, why am I against what the Valorant team is saying here? It has nothing to do with banning people for what is very clearly things that are obvious harassment, like wishing grape on someone while playing. But that in the article and the video Valorant posted, they confirmed that they have successfully worked with the platform their game is available on, and when Valorant comes to future platforms to ensure that if you get banned in Valorant for whatever reason, it can lead to a hardware ban too. For those of you unaware of what that means, let's put it this way. You're playing Valorant on PC. Let's say you get banned because you're angry and you say something in the heat of the moment. Within the confines of Valorant, they now have the ability to ban your PC from accessing something like the Epic Games Store entirely. So you're not only banned from playing Valorant, you're banned period from playing any game wherever you were playing Valorant from. All the digital games you bought with your money, the hours spent, your entire account is locked forever and you can never access it again. So let's say in the future when Valorant is available on PlayStation, which as of the making of this video it isn't, but I'm sure it will be eventually. If you mess up for even a second or someone accuses you of some sort of harassment, you could very well have your entire PlayStation library taken from you and your console bricked by Sony and Riot Games. Now this is obviously a delicate conversation because some might say, so what should we allow harassment to reign free? Well, no. But if you've watched my videos before, you know I have a tendency to look at all sides of an issue to try to come to some sort of understanding. And the reality is that this sets a terrifying precedent against free speech and your access to the games you bought on whatever platform you are on. People get falsely flagged all the time within these games. I know there's plenty of you who have played something like Destiny or Call of Duty. And at some point, you received a notification or a message from other players saying that they're filing a complaint against you saying that you're cheating when you were just better than they are. I remember plenty of times playing Trials of Osiris and Destiny 2 with friends and we would be winning and then suddenly all of our games would crash and our internet would turn off. And it was cause whoever we were fighting would launch DDoS attacks on our IP addresses in order to force our game clients into crashing so that they wouldn't lose. I wish people weren't this petty, but it's a real thing. Especially if you stream or something, what says that thousands of people can't just falsely report you in a game? And if that were to happen, you could get banned for doing nothing wrong at all. I'm not saying Valorant shouldn't ban people for being toxic or racist. I think that if you did what that one user did in the clip I showed, yeah, you should be banned from playing Valorant. But to go as far as to say that the person in question should have their entire account that is separate from Valorant as a game be banned and have their hundreds, if not thousands of dollars spent on other games taken from them is insane. Because this sets a worryingly scary precedent going forward. It's also why 9 out of 10 times when I play multiplayer games, I just mute my mic so nobody hears me. Not because I will say something problematic, but I don't even want to chance the idea of someone saying that I said something that I didn't. These companies are now using AI, by the way, to listen to your in-game chat for problematic stuff. No, hell no. I'm just gonna mute my mic or talk on Discord or something instead. I don't even want to gamble with some random AI in some game thinking that I did something I didn't. And then suddenly my entire PSN account is blocked forever. Screw that. I think that we're reaching a point here where the good intentions of these companies is quickly being transformed into a very obvious power grab that will permeate throughout not only Valorant, but many other games too. Like, I can already see me and my friends beating people in Destiny 2, and then they get salty and they mass report us constantly, until eventually I get hit with a ban or suspension simply because people are jealous that they got bodied in a game and lost. And that can also get misinterpreted by AI, and now my entire console is bricked because some guy in Wyoming is salty that I beat him in a video game. This level of big brother-like control, it just makes me never want to play multiplayer games at all, period, ever again. The fact these games are not only pushing to be jury and executioner without any oversight and how they listen to you, like, how, dude, that's so creepy. 
All of it just makes me never want to play anything that these people make. I will likely never play Valorant when it comes to PS5 now just because of the ethics behind it. By playing and buying microtransactions, I would be supporting a game that believes that it's within their right I should have all of my games and abilities taken from me as a consumer of that platform. And that's insane to me. Like the fact you could be playing Valorant or Overwatch and then you mistakenly misgender someone or a character even. And someone on the other end just screeches and then boom, your Steam account or your PSN is now gone forever? That is just beyond the comfortable limits of what I believe these companies should have when it comes to power. None of us are above the law, I get that, but this sets a very scary status quo going forward. Eventually, it'll go beyond the platform itself and then seep into other things. Oh, you had wrong thing on Twitter. Well, say goodbye to your Steam library now. You probably think that I'm being hyperbolic and I would normally agree with you. But these days, I'm just waiting for these companies to announce it for sure going forward. You end up making an edgy joke on Facebook. Well, now your PS5 is bricked and useless. No thanks, I'm out even before I start playing your game. The massive oversight of these companies when it comes to their ability to control your access to your goods you paid for is really scary to me. Even on YouTube here, which I live off of, I need to watch what I say or how I convey stuff because any wrong move could result in deplatforming. There's enough hoops to jump through as it is for me, but I think allowing companies the ability to gain more power like this is a really bad idea. I have no problem with someone getting banned within the confines of that one singular game on their account if what they did is validated for being hate speech. But to brick your PC or eventual console is where I think this is all crossing a line for me. Of course, some will say, well, just don't be an asshole online, which is fair, but again, these bans are often wrongfully pushed and things like AI can and will make mistakes. We see it all the time on places like Twitch, where streamers are getting banned for a week or months for almost no reason at all. How many times has Kai Sanat or others been banned from Twitch randomly at this point with no explanation at all? You really want to leave your entire game's library, account, your trophies, achievements, friend lists, all of this in the hands of some AI that might make a mistake. Or some overzealous moderator who thinks they have power over you or something. Look at Discord alone. You ever ran into a mod there where they act like they have the power of Thor or something and they just start banning people? Now imagine those people being able to ban your Steam or PSN accounts because they disagree with you. This is beyond slippery, and I need people to realize that what Valorant is doing here is well past good intentions and has fully entered the realm of dystopian nonsense. Absolute power corrupts absolutely, and if people just accept this, they will keep moving the needle and this will just keep getting worse. Any interest I had in Valorant is officially gone now. I will never play this game, even if it comes to PS5. There's no way I'm supporting a game where the developers believe that they have the right to brick my console and steal my hundreds of games from me. And the fact all it would take for that to happen is for some kid to say I said something or I did something that I didn't is insane. If you play Valorant yourself, strongly reconsider because you're playing with fire. And whether it's companies overreaching their power or ruining your favorite properties like Warhammer, as per usual, the pleas of the fans and players often fall on deaf ears. But what do you think about all of this? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you for being here. Subscribe, share, and like the video. Thanks to my patrons and take care of yourselves. And I'll see you in the next one.